my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. If you have been here before or seen one of my videos in the last few years, these bookshelves probably look familiar to you and today I will be doing a bookshelf tour. I'm going to be moving so these shelves are probably not going to stay in the same state that they are in now. I'm going to be doing probably a pretty big unhaul so keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks but before I did any of that I did want to do a bookshelf tour because I've had these shelves like this pretty much the same with a few changes here and there for the last two years and I feel like they just deserve to have a tour done of them before I move. So with that being said let's just jump into the bookshelf tour. Okay, so first we are going to start here, which is my TV stand, and I just have some random books here. It's like a nine shelf thing from Target. It's actually pretty messy, so I don't necessarily want to show the whole thing, but I do have a lot of books here. So we have Aurora Rising, which I've yet to read, as well as the rest of the Illuminae files, which are written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, so that's kind of why they are here together. I love this series so much. And then I have The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic, which I really do need to get to. And then we have Before the Devil Breaks You here, which I just have this one because this one is signed. I went to a book signing and Libra Bray was there. So yes, I have this one signed. I don't have the rest of the series yet, but I know that I need to get to it. Then down here, this is my arc shelf. And so these are the arcs that I need to get to. So I have basically two rows of arcs here so I can just pull these out and these are the books that I have behind it. A lot of these books I got at ALA in January. This is another shelf where I'm keeping my manga and just some other books so if you see here I have Yona of the Dawn, Missions of Love, Waiting for Spring, Death Note, Happiness, Full Metal Alchemist and then just move these a little bit. Behind it, I have the Shatter Me series, which I have yet to finish. <laughs> this is literally my nightstand next to my bed. I just have a few extra books here. Keepers of the Lost City, Keepers of the Lost City Exile, which I do want to get to. Um, the Last Magician is just a little bit too bulky to keep on my shelf. One of your Deception, We Hunt the Flame. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, I've resorted to piling books in uh, the nooks and crannies, which is why an unhaul is needed over here. This is some fishing book that my dad got my boyfriend. Uh, I have the last Namsara, Before We Were Yours, which my grandma sent to me, and the Caged Queen. And then this is a Morphe palette that I just stick here. Uh, yeah, not the most aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of just accumulated over time, so... This will be something that I'm working on as I move and really try and shed my collection. Okay, so now we come up here to the tippy top and this is where I'm keeping some arcs that I need to get to. If you want to know more about the arcs that I got, I got the most at ALA and you can check out my ALA haul where I talk about each book individually. I also have this Katie's library sign, which is super cute, but it kind of, the letters slide everywhere and they don't really stay. That's kind of, yeah, this is not gonna come up. Yeah, here's just a better look at the arcs that I have. Oh no. Okay, see? That's why 
Moving on down to the first shelf that I have here. This is my Game of Thrones and other random hardback collection. So I am a big Game of Thrones fan. I did read all of these books and I have pretty much the whole collection of everything Game of Thrones so far. I also have this really beautiful Game of Thrones collector's edition that my best friend gave me for my birthday this year and I just absolutely adore it. Next, we have Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which I absolutely adore this series. Love it so much and the spines are just so pretty. As well as with Ruthless Gods, I mean, this book is just gorgeous. These two books together, absolutely adore them. Then I have Courting Darkness, Children of Blood and Bone, which I'm actually currently reading. So I literally just put it back on the shelf in this video. Children of Virtue and Vengeance, and then the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I'm gonna take Children of Blood and Bone off the shelf since I am reading it and this shelf is a little bit too tight. So, Stalking Jack the Ripper series, we have Stalking Jack the Ripper, Hunting Prince Dracula, Escaping from Houdini, and Capturing the Devil. I read this whole series with Isabella, who is one of my best friends here on YouTube, Throne of Pages, love her. Uh, we buddy read this whole series in October together and it was just a buddy read full of five stars. It was absolutely amazing. I absolutely adore this series and Carrie Maniscalco. I'm so excited for her new release coming out this fall. And then here we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is autographed from my local bookstore. And finally, All the Stars and Teeth, which is a book that I was on the street team for, so I was excited to pick up a copy. Okay, so right now we're going to be at a bit of an angle because my couch is in the way. But right here, I do have my USA powerlifting medal that I won because I used to compete in competitive powerlifting, so I had to keep it on my shelf. Ooh, I don't know if you could have seen that in that thing. There it is. Okay. Next, we have this bookwork and bookworm and proud mug that I got in an Owl Creek Forever Go. I just think it's absolutely so cute. So I have to keep it on my shelf. And yes, this is my shadow hunters shelf so i absolutely adore shadow hunters here i have mortal instruments paperback set that comes together to form a picture i absolutely love it i have lady midnight here i don't think i'm going to pick up the rest of them just because i already have them in hardcover over here we have the city of bones 10th anniversary edition by Cassandra Clare. Gold sprayed edges, just absolutely gorgeous. Love this book, so happy to have it in my collection. I do own the Clockwork Princess one, but I left it in my parents' house in Florida because I didn't have room in my suitcase around Christmas, and little did I know I wouldn't be able to visit them for a while. So that's kind of sad. Here I have by my Infernal devices collection i have this clockwork angel necklace that i got on amazon if you just type in clockwork angel i'm pretty sure it pops up it's like five dollars but i love having it around the books then i have these playing cards that i got from Litjoy crate actually at BookCon, and that's will i believe that the artist for these is gabrielle bajuso tessa and jim and i just love having these character cards displayed by the books because then you can see the characters that are in them. Here I have my collection of Shadowhunters samplers that I've accumulated either at signings or book con or anything like that. I just like love getting them and I just think they're really easy to store and a really cute thing to go along with the collection. So I have those two. And then if you come over here I have a Chain of Gold sampler as well as the Cassandra Clare Classics Reimagined in the World of Shadow Hunters book that was a pre-order benefit for Queen of Air and Darkness. And this is a Will and Gem candle that I got in a box and it actually smells really good. I smell it all the time. And here we have the two Shadow Hunters graphic novels, which I adore graphic novelizations. I just think that they're so fun. Those two companion books to the Shadowhunter series and the Dark Artifices, which is a series in the Shadowhunters world that I absolutely adore. And next, this is my Lee Bardugo and continuation of Shadowhunters shelf because Shadowhunters stuff just 
uh, there's more than what fits on one shelf. So here I have this little sloth, Beanie Baby, because I love sloth, so I keep him here. I have Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, King of Scars, and this Six of Crows Collector's Edition, which is one of my absolute favorite collector's edition. It has red, red sprayed edges, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I do have the matching Crooked Kingdom one, but again, it's at my parents' house. This is a Threshold from Harry Potter, and I have this Funko Pop. I love the creatures from Harry Potter. So I keep them here, and then I have this King of, this King of Car Star, the King of Scars sampler that I got at BookCon in 2018. So I love it because I just love the memories associated with it, as well as a Grisha verse passport that I got when I went to the King of Scars signing. And here I am with my book at the signing. I just think it's such a cute little memory. So I adore this, and yeah, you get. A stamp for every book that comes out so I wonder if I can get more Grishaverse stamps in the future with more Grishaverse books. Then here I have some tarot cards. These actually go with a quarter of Stones of Roses so I should probably move them but this is Azrael, Moore, Feyre, and Reese and I'm not sure of the artist but they did come in a fairy loot box. Next, moving on to more Shadow Hunters, we have Ghost of the Shadow Market, and then I have these Chain of Gold character cards that I got at ALA. And this is Cordelia, James, Lucy, Thomas, Matthew, Anna, and that's it. And these are illustrated by Charlie Bowater. So one of my prized collections is that I got this Chain of Gold arc at ALA. It was an absolutely amazing experience. It was a little hectic and crazy. There were only seven copies at the whole place. Um, even though I kind of, nowadays I'm not trying to hold on to arcs as much after I get finished copies of the books, I did just want to hold on to this one because it is a special memory and kind of a collector's item. Which, speaking of collector's item, we get to my favorite part of the shelf, and that is my Waterstones editions. So here I have my Chain of Gold, The Last Hours, book one edition. This book is just so freaking pretty. I love it so much. I think Waterstones just does really amazing collector's editions. I love collector's editions. You will see many of them on my shelves. So Chain of Gold is probably my favorite one for all the shadow hunters, but I do also have this Lord of Shadows and... Queen of Ending Darkness. I don't know if I will ever own Lady Midnight because it's pretty much impossible to find for under a thousand dollars and I wish that was a joke. And here are the Red Scrolls of Magic so I will be getting the matching one for the Lost Book of the White. And then just the last thing that I have here is the Red Scrolls of Magic and I have another critter from Fantastic Beasts and this is a Matagoat and it's just, it looks very Shadowhunter-esque so that's why it's chilling on my Shadowhunter shelf. Okay, so this shelf is kind of like a mishmash of different things, but this is kind of where I put my drinks and stuff when I am reading because I always sit next to here. I have this nice rose scented candle from Anthropology that I keep here. This is where things also start to get messy because I have an overwhelming amount of books. I have um, this, this paper that I, I just found there, okay. Um, I have Wicked Fox, which is the first book of the month book that I have. I am no longer affiliated with Book of the Month, but I did really love this book. We have Four Dead Queens Owl Crate Edition. Have Red Rising. Red Rising, which is a gift from Maddie. And then the Tea Dragon Society Owl Crate version, which is so cute. Storm Crow and Saga, which are kind of just stacked here. So yeah, as you can see, it's just kind of overflowing with books and something needs to be done about the shelf. Can't even get this book back. Oh no. Well, it really wouldn't be a video of mine if there wasn't some chaos sprinkled in, you know? So then starting over here, I have the Wilbur Children series. I just have the first two, Every Heart A Doorway and down among the sticks and bones. Then I have the Red Wolf of Sand series, which I read like probably before I started BookTube. I literally found it randomly on Amazon. And I've never really heard that many people talking about it. Um, yeah. And then we have the fifth season by N.K. Jemison, which is the fifth season, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky. And I just think we should all appreciate these covers because they are 
absolutely gorgeous. I adore this series. I really do think I need to give it a reread soon because it is just phenomenal. I mean, it won the Hugo Award like three years in a row or something like that, which is just crazy. Uh, really, really good adult fantasy series. I highly suggest that everyone read it. Then we have The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I have this gigantic Lord of the Rings book that is kind of just like a mess. This was horrible to read from because like one book is like this and then <laughs> so you'd be reading the book and you'd feel like you're getting it nowhere. So I don't really like bind ups like these. And then they have this little mini Hobbit book. This is actually the, the one book that my boyfriend has on the shelf because he's not a reader, but he's read The Hobbit like four times and then nothing else. So there's that. Then I just want to talk about my Trisha Levenseller collection because she's an author that I absolutely adore. All these books are actually signed by her, so Daughter of the Pirate King, and she wrote some really cute phrases in here. I think she said, girls make the best pirates. And we have Daughter of the Siren Queen, Warrior of the Wild, and The Shadows Between Us. So she's just an author that I absolutely adore. I love all of her works. And she's an autobiography author for me. Then I have this little Pokemon guy. He's so cute. I love like folk, punk, Funko Pop like creatures. <laughs> um, and then here we have this baby Yoda that is knit that my boyfriend just said someone at his job knitted them for everyone. And I am a baby Yoda enthusiast. So of course, of course I love this. Next, I just have like this stack of random books that I mostly have not read yet that I haven't gotten to. I've read Onyx and Ivory, um, Ember and Dusk, Study in Charlotte, and that's it for this. And a lot of like these are boxes, books from boxes. This is like a third book. You know, this is a second book in a series, but also follows like a different series. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So now let's move down to the next shelf. So I don't even really know how I'm going to film this shelf. I guess I'll just kind of hold the camera because it's like right by the couch arm, as you can see here. However, I have my science book collections. Um, all of these four books here, well, these four, skip that one, this one, are by Sam Keen, and he writes really like whimsical scientific, scientific fiction. Um, it's really cool. And then we also have The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which I highly recommend to anyone that's going to work in healthcare. It just talks about Henrietta Lacks, whose cells were used to create like cancer medicines and stuff, but like the mistreatment of her family because she was black and poor. Um, it talks a lot about ethics in healthcare, so I can't recommend that enough. Then we move over here and it's just like a random mishmash of books, honestly. So we have Shadow of the Fox. Been meaning to read that forever, have not gotten to it yet, but I think I'll like it. Then I have some more book of the month books that I have here. So House of Salt and Sorrows. The 10,000 Doors of January. These books I actually just got today and threw them on the shelf for the bookstore because I wanted to talk about them. We have a Mexican Gothic, which is a horror novel, which I don't normally reach towards horror novels, but I'm so excited about this one. So I'm hopefully gonna read it soon. And then Beach Read, which I've heard is just like an awesome summer book. So hopefully I'll get to these too soon. And those were the last books that I got with book of the month. Um, cause I had some remaining credits from forgetting to skip the month and I've ended my affiliation with them because I did not like really agree with what they were doing as a company. Okay. So now we have the giver, which I've had this book since I read it in the sixth grade. I absolutely loved it when I read it when I was young. Then I have To Kill a Mockingbird, which is again a school book that I read. I actually reread it and annotated it. Um, it's just an important work and I love this cover, so I like to keep it on my shelf. The Princess, The Prince and the Dressmaker is one of the most adorable comics that I have ever seen about a seamstress and a cross-dressing prince. Then literally, oh, here's this Winnie the Pooh ornament. I love Winnie the Pooh. Just a bunch of kind of random books. And then here is my bookmark jar and it's a mug that my sister got me that looks like a beaker and it has the chemical symbol for caffeine on it which love to see it and then i keep my annotation pens here because they're easily reachable on the couch and yeah <laughs> i don't even think i should attempt to show the shelf that is underneath here but um it's it's literally just a random pile of books in the dark and i will be going through them and figuring out which ones to 
keep and throw out, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we'll just peek up here real quick. I have a Percy Jackson and a Brandon Sanderson box set, and they are missing some because I have them out to read the next ones, and then some random German figures because my boyfriend's family is German, and it's like a German thing, and his mom gave them to us. So they live up there. Here we have my Harry Potter shelf. So I have this really nice Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone 10th anniversary edition here. I have this Quidditch World Cup ticket that I got from Litjoy Crate at BookCon, as well as this Platform 9 and 3 quarters ticket. Um, I actually don't have a full set of Harry Potter up here just because I have been meaning to go back and buy the hardcovers and then everything is JK Rowling is just being awful so I haven't bought them. <laughs> um, but I, okay, I have them switched for some reason. I did have my childhood copies here but they are kind of the paperbacks and they're kind of beat up so I'm gonna mail them back to my parents for safekeeping. I do have this mug I actually got in a like thing at work. Um, a Ginny Weasley Funko, a Hermione Funko. Um, let's not really thing up. Fanta Cursed Child, <laughs> Fantastic Beast, these two Ravenclaw editions, because I'm a Ravenclaw. This color is my favorite. It's 29th anniversary edition. And then I have Dumbledore here. Oh, things are falling. Um, yeah, obviously I'm you know, upset with the JK Rowling situation that is happening currently. So, you know, I obviously don't support anything that JK Rowling has said, but these books were a big part of my childhood. So I still have them here and still have them on display. Yeah, it just sucks. And I think a lot of people can agree that it just sucks to see someone that was so formative in your childhood have really shitty opinions and turns out that they're an awful person. So that's that. Okay, and let's move down to the next shelf. So this is one of my favorite shelves and it's my V.E. Schwab, Holly Black, and uh, Margaret Rogerson shelf and they have some of my favorite books. So if we start over here, I have this little Hedwig because it matches the color scheme. Then if we go here, um, I have the V.E. Schwab Shades of Magic comic. I have not picked up the other ones yet, so I do plan on doing that because I love V.E. Schwab. Then we have the collector's editions of A Darker Shade of Magic, which I just absolutely adore them. I got the black versions instead of the Barnes & Noble metallic editions. Um, so there's A Darker Shade of Magic, a gathering of shadows, and a conjuring of light. And I absolutely adore these editions. Then I have like my this mug that I have, and it's from Anthropology, and it's like a subway tile mug, and I just think it fits so well with this color scheme. Then here is more Schwab books. So we have Darker Shade of Magic, Gathering of Shadows, Conjuring of Light, which are the copies that I read. I really do want to go back and do a reread of the series at some point. Vicious and Vengeful, which I actually won Vicious in a giveaway and it randomly showed up in at my house in paperback. Otherwise, I probably would have it in hardcover. The Savage Song and Our Dark Duet, which I love. And then I have this Sue Nye candle from a book box, but it's from In the Wick of Time is the maker of it. The smell is... um kind of questionable, but you know, I have. So now we can move over here, and this is where I have my Quill cool Prince collection. Love the Quill cool Prince. So we have the Barnes & Noble editions, so the black covers, Quill cool Prince, Wicked King, and Queen of Nothing, and these ones are, of course, the ones that are under the jacket, jacket are white, which I adore. And yeah, if you know me, when the Cruel cool Prince Barnes & Noble edition was really hard to find, I was a big proponent of Barnes & Noble reprinting them, and then they did, and it was wonderful. And then these are the regular editions that have the black under the cover, and I have this one facing out because I do really like the frost theme. But you know what, maybe I'll change it up today because I just feel like it. So, then if you know me, you know that Sorcery of Thorns is one of my favorite books. It was my top book of 2019. I read it twice that year, annotated the heck out of it. And I also have this the Owl Crate or Fairy Loot, I think Owl Crate, um, exclusive edition that is purple. Love it. So, you know what, I think 
I'm gonna clean it up and put this one facing out for now. Yeah. Or I'm gonna do the regular one. I think I'll do this one. And then I also have Enchantment of Ravens here, which is just like a little fairy tale oops, book that Margaret Rogerson wrote. This is her debut novel. I also really adore this. It's just a really cute fairy tale romance. Fae, human, it's great. And this is a Wicked King bookmark that I have that like the pre-order pin came on. Now we are here at the Sarah J Maas shelf with other two books on the side. So over here I have Skyward and Starsight by Brandon Sanderson and I just have them here because I felt like the colors would match. And then I have this really cute Funko Pop and this is the Baby Dragon from How to Train Your Dragon 3. I just thought it was so cute so I had to have it. Then I have this little RJ baby RJ head keychain that I got from the BT21 store when I was there in January with Maddie. Then of course, here we have my shrine. And this is like this little random tiara I got on like Amazon or something, but I think it's really cute for the shelf. And here we have my two collector's editions, Throne of Glass collector's edition, which is just such a stunning book. And out of the slip case, it looks like that, I mean, just the shine, it's beautiful, I love it. Similarly, we have a Court of Thorns and Roses Collector's Edition. Looks like that on the back. And this is what it looks like when you pull it out and it is just so absolutely gorgeous. The publishers really do a fantastic job on these Collector's Editions. This book is one I'm so happy to have and it is the Crescent City Tour Edition. Um, Through Love, All is Possible, which is a very meaningful quote in this book. I just think it's so pretty. I love Waterstones editions so much. So this was supposed to be a copy that you could only get on tour, but since Sarah J Mass's tour was canceled this year, unfortunately they did put it up on the website, so I was able to grab it. And I'm so excited about it. I just think it looks so nice. Here we have a little Vulpix Funko Pop. I'm just absolutely adoring all the Pokemon Funko Pops and I just, you know, gotta catch them all. Next, we come to the Akotar section, which like the superior Akotar book. Please make sure to check out um, A Court of Read-Alongs, which Maddie and I will be hosting October through February for the new Sarah J Maas books. I don't really want to pick up the new ones of these. I don't really feel the cover, but we'll see what happens when the new book comes out and it doesn't match. I don't know. We'll see my feelings. And then next here is my Throne of Glass stack. I'm not going to take them all out because that's annoying. <laughs> um, but I have these playing cards again from Lit Joy Crate that were by Gabrielle Bajoso. And we have Dorian, Selena, and Rowan. And I do absolutely just love having these on the shelf. Okay, so here is another shelf that is just chock full of collector's editions. And this is my Dark Dawn. Um, Dream Dreamer, other stuff that I really love. Shelf, so I have this beautiful mug uh, from Illumicrate Dark Dawn Box, as well as this Mia Funko Pop, that, or I guess it's not like a Funko Pop, but it's pretty much a Funko Pop. Then I have my Pride and Joy, my Nevernight collection of the stunning UK editions that are just like impossible to find, but I found them, so I have Nevernight, God's Grave. I actually ended up ordering this one like a week before it went out of print in hardcover, which was just crazy. And Dark Dawn, I ended up getting the Waterstones black sprayed edges, and I just adore the series. This is my favorite cover of them, so I've, of course, keep them outside, facing out. Then we have this Corvair family crest. I keep around these books. Um, it doesn't like to stay, so I'll just keep it like that. Next is Fury Born and Kingsbane. I love this series, and I feel like it's very underrated, or people tend to not really like it at all. But I love it. I just think it's really good. Shows a very good descent into villainy. So check it out if you have not yet. But I'm so excited for the third book that's coming out in the fall. There Will Come in Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. Read an arc of that uh, last August, I think. Absolutely adored it. Then I have this Toothless Funko from How to Train Your Dragon because I love Toothless. Next we have Strange the Dreamer. 
US editions and then my UK copies which when I unboxed this I literally screamed because I didn't know it was coming with blue sprayed edges. It was a former library copy and this is one of my prized possessions because it was so hard to find. Um, I also have this bookmark that I keep here with a Shinji Dreamer quote and I just think it's beautiful so I love to have it out on the shelf. And here we have Muse of Nightmares, which is also the orange sprayed edges edition, which I believe is first press only. So I absolutely adore it. This duology is one of my favorites. So I'm so happy that I can have these beautiful collector's editions in my home. Okay, and here is another shelf that is chock full of fantasy novels. Over there we have Renegades and Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I have not picked up the third one in that trilogy yet, but hopefully I will soon. Here is a Bulbasaur Funko Pop. I just love these Pokemon Funko Pops, I just think they're so cute. Then here I have the Lunar Chronicles series, which I adore. And I have these two, uh, what are these things called? They're from Fantastic Beasts on top, as well as this Lunar Queen candle that I got in a box so it matches with the Lunar Chronicles. And honestly, it smells so good. Here we have a Charmander Funko Pop, so cute. And it kind of fits that it's right here with Priori of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon because this is dragons and they breathe fire and this guy breathes fire. A chunky book. Then we have Heart of Flames, the um, pretty, I don't want to take it out because this shelf is so squished, but this is the Owl Crate edition, I believe. Um, my friend gifted this to me, and then this little guy from Fantastic Beasts, Girls of Paper and Fire, Girls of Storm and Shadow, Scythe, Thunderhead, and I have the toll, I just can't put it on the shelf. Then we have Stitch, who is one of my favorite Disney characters. And then over here we have Warcross and Wildcard by Marie Lu. And then we have the King of is it the King of Atolia series here. These four in paperback, and then the Raven Cycle in paperback, which I kind of don't like these paperbacks because they got so wrinkled when I read them. Because the binding is so tight. But yes, I bet I did read them. Okay. And then just one last shelf. And here we have it, the bottom shelf. And this is just a stack of books. I do have this really nice lace frame that my grandma got for me in Europe many years ago. Ash Princess, Carry On, then the Red Queen series. I have some collector's editions as well as the regular editions. Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. And then I have the Hunger Games there. And over here I have just like, a lot. Um, Three Dark Crowns, Ember and the Ashes, Carval, and then in the middle I just stick, stuck Sturban and Dove here, and then I have my Monstrous comics here, which they are my favorite graphic novel series. Absolutely adore them. Um, I'm not gonna get them out because it's literally squished, which is why I need to unhaul. And then over here in the corner I have some prints that I got in a fairy loot box. We have Jude and Cardin, uh, Laia and Elias, and then Amika from Warcross. Um, this is from Ember in the Ashes. And this is from the Coral Prince. And I just stick them over here because I don't know where else to put them. And there you have it. That is my long awaited bookshelf tour. <laughs> everyone for watching my bookshelf tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed having these shelves the past two years, but I am excited to change it up a little bit. And I'm happy that I was able to capture my shelves in their current state in this video. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.